Good morning. This is Captain Sweep, and I would like to read something to you. To follow the path of wisdom has never been more urgent or more difficult. Our society is dedicated almost entirely to the celebration of ego, with all its sad fantasies about success and power, and it celebrates those very forces of greed and ignorance that are destroying the planet. It has never been more difficult to hear the unflattering voice of the truth, and never more difficult, once having heard it, to follow it. Because there is nothing in the world around us that supports our choice, and the entire society in which we live seems to negate every idea of sacredness or eternal meaning. So at the time of our most acute danger, when our very future is in doubt, we as human beings find ourselves at our most bewildered and trapped in a nightmare of our own creation. This is from the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying by Sogil Rinpoche, and I apologize if my uh, pronunciation is off. I don't do well in that department. I don't know about you, but I've been on a quest for real meaning for the last pretty much 30 years. And I'm not so sure that I found it in terms of an external meaning, but I have found something in terms of an internal meaning in creating our own meaning or generating our own meaning based upon whatever values that we create and the type of experience that we have and then our goals and where we're heading to. And so meaning comes from the relationship to this world in response to my values and my goals. And then meaning and significance come from that. Now, this may or may not make sense to you, but if you don't have an internal value structure and you don't have uh, an external goal sort of system, it's hard to sort of create meaning based upon what all these other people are telling you is important. So what I found is you have to spend some time to design your value system and your goal system. And those are the two biggest leverage points in any type of system. If you understand the values and you understand the goals, then you can pretty well understand that system. But that won't necessarily create peace of mind because as you probably already know, the uh, outside world has its own type of maneuvering that doesn't exactly correspond to what we want or what we need. And so we have to figure out how do we create an alignment with sort of the laws of the universe and our internal navigation system. This map is the primary first model in the inflow matrix to learn and to memorize and to program. And it has the personal space, the one-on-one space, the group space, the community space, and the sacred space. And these five spaces are the places where you see your patterns. They're the places where you can distinguish, well, this is different from that. Here I am alone. It's just me. No one's here. Oh, here I am with one person. And we only have just uh, them and I to speak with and listen to. And then at the group space, You know, it's more than two people, but there's some sort of connection between the group, whether through proximity or through some sort of boundary. And then the community space where it's more open uh, to everyone to participate in, but it may get kind of convoluted by the group space, depending upon what is happening there. And then the sacred space in the middle which is the connection point to anyone's spiritual or religious path. And it's more open without being sort of, uh, I wouldn't say contaminated by language, but I mean, everyone has a different worldview. And so they're gonna approach the sacred space very differently. But what we're looking at are these five spaces are the cornerstone for beginning to create a multi-dimensional thinking system which uh, I call the inflow matrix operating system, which is a a bunch of abstract maps, which all fit together in order to give the mind a way to make sense of the world. Most of us may not really understand how the mind works and how to program it. 
it's a, a territory. It's a unknown place that we rarely speak about to each other about how we organize it or how it's used or what happens inside. We tend to talk about the external world and it's difficult to speak about the internal world with people in this type of society these days. Every philosophy or worldview has maps, maps that give a way to organize the concepts for the mind to begin to understand how to relate this inner world with the outer world. And so this symbol, the yin yang is, is very well known and it's at the base of duality. It is the base of the, the Chinese philosophy and it's the base of many philosophies, whether you know it or not, because it's a, a fundamental truth. You look at sacred geometry and objects like the star tetrahedron, there's a mathematical purity to the relationship between the parts inside of the whole. And what I've been playing with is how to place language on sacred geometry in order to give coherence to the mind, in order to align with these higher universal laws. Now you may or may not use conceptual maps to organize your mind, to organize your business, to organize your work, to organize everything. Um, if you don't, I suggest that you might begin to because it's a fascinating process to design your own value system or to design your own belief system. It's like the essential part of who you are. This particular map right behind me, the flow map, is one of the center points of the inflow matrix operating system. And this has to do with organizing yourself to be in any business. You have a field and uh, that field has an abundance of resources in it. And with that, you go on a job and have missions where you carry out activities, where you use your gifts to build products and you create uh, relationship bonds with people as you go down paths, following strategies to honor certain agreements. So you go in a certain direction and all the conversations you have are connected to this. So what has happened here is we're taking words that are structure words, so a word like activities, so many different types of activities, uh, products, so many different types of products, gifts, so many different types of gifts. So all of these words apply to everyone in the world, but the content, what is inside these words is different. So it's like a universal model to organize any job, but then you get to design the job the way you want based upon these words. But it takes a while to build. And if you go, uh, this way, taking long, big steps, it can be very difficult. So what we're going to try to do is little steps along the way. And if this interests you in any way and you want to build an internal thinking system or become a facilitator with the new paradigm toolkit, which contains all of the maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software to build a new paradigm, send me a message and we'll take a look at how we can get you started.